Hello children, today I am going to teach you the remaining part of the story last spring. Authored by Anish Jung. See how children are working in cigarette factory. It is harmful for the children and it is banned by law. Children cannot work in such type of industries but they are working and everybody knows. Even protection of official is, is there. Without protection of official, such type of work cannot go. See, at the age of schooling, when they have to sit in the schools and learn, when they, they, they have to busy with the playthings, with the toys, in this age, they are working and they are picking how much load on their heads. To see, this is their age and type of work you can see, they are not made for that. So their childhood has been lost. Anish Jung feels very much sympathy for all these children. And whenever she meets with such children, so she wants to talk, she wants to know the circumstances, why they have been dragged in such type of business, in such type of work. Though she knows that they are equal partners in the survival, still wherever she sees any child working, she starts talking. So she is in Firodabad at this time and she visits the Bengal making industry. She enters the dingy cell where she finds one very small girl, Savita, making bangles, soldiering the piece of pieces of glasses. She is dressed in drab pink dress. So, see, drab means faded. So, it is old dress, pink dress she is wearing, but that is faded. And she is sitting alongside an elderly woman. One elderly woman is sitting with her and she is soldiering pieces of glass. She is working just like machine. Mechanically her hands are working. When you, uh, when anybody does anything, so he becomes habitual and due to practice, he starts working as machine. So see, this Savita might be working for years. She is very small girl, still might be two, three years past from when she started the work. So her hands movement tells that she is habitual of doing this and so she is working just like machine, Tom some machine. She, Arthur wonders, she feels that the Bengals this girl is making, does she know the holiness of those Bengals? Sanctity means holiness. The holiness, she doesn't know. These Bengals are symbol of Indian woman Suhag. This thing also she doesn't know. These are considered as auspicious in marriages. This is also not known to her because she is too small to understand all these things. But one day she will be young. She will be of the age of marriage. And when she will be going to marry, so at that time she will wear red sari and her head will be covered with red veil and in her hands there will be red henna, hands will be red with henna, henna means mehdi. So there she will use henna, that she will make design with the help of henna in her hands at the time of marriage and she will wear red bangles on that day and those red bangles will roll on her wrist. Then she will become bride. She will be ready for marriage. This old man, woman who is sitting beside her, so she also became bride one day, but it happened many, many years back. She is swagging. Her husband is alive. So she, she is wearing glass bangles on her wrist, but due to working for a long time in this glass industry, her, there is no light in her eyes. She has gone blind. When Atha talks with her about her manual condition, so she says, Ek vakt ser bhar khana bhi nahi khaya. She told that throughout her life, an entire lifetime, she even did not enjoy it. She did not enjoy even a 
single full meal means always when she eats her stomach is demanding for some more when she is telling such type of thing so she, there is no joy in her voice she she is very sad so other things see whole day that lady remains working from morning to leave she remains working in that factory but factory doesn't give her that much so that she can eat up to her full satisfaction and this is she has reaped this is the result of her hard work mind numbering hard work so that she, she could not get even a single meal in her entire lifetime to her satisfaction when the her husband is also nearby so arthur talks with her husband and her husband uh, has a flowing beard he says i know nothing except bangles she tells he accepts that he cannot do anything from childhood he is busy in making bangles so he is expert at these bangles only so he cannot do anything else and he says that whole life i have earned by working in this factory only this much i could save that i could got one house built for my family to live in when arthur hears that he has constructed one house from his savings so she feels wonder because she talked with many people and she found that after working whole life they could not save that much that they could have a roof over their heads but this thing he achieved that is achievement for him then she talks with the people working in bengal industries she visited many houses she talked with many people so she finds that everywhere only one thing is there the cry of not having money to do anything except carry on business of making bangles only when she talks with them that why don't you change your business then only one thing they say that they don't have money they can only carry on this business of making bangles they cannot change their business they cannot have that much money for changing the business not even enough to eat drinks in every home they are not earning that much so that they can get enough to eat this wise she has said this thing she has heard in every home whenever she talked with ladies whenever she talked with gents she find finds only this cry that they don't have sufficient money to do anything after that she talks young men young men also equal lemming of their elders whatever complaint of their elders was they also make the same complaint echo the lament whatever lament the weeping so the elders they feel sad for not having any money in the same way young men also say the same thing when she asked from them little has moved with time it seems in firozabad so she she says that in firozabad nothing has been changed much time passed but still conditions environment of firozabad is same there is no important change in firozabad years of mind numbering tile have killed all initiatives and ability to dream so mind numbering tile means that much hard work which can make the mind dead so that mind mind's thinking capacity dreaming capacity is finished so much hard work they had to do from morning till night till eve that they cannot get even a single minute to think for changing their life to do anything else because their mind is so much tired in the evening their body mind everything so much tired that they don't have any ability to dream left with them so they cannot take any initiative now arthur asked about cooperative society why they don't make cooperative society so cooperative society you know here uh, poor people they can come together they can start their business they can um, 
pool their money they can start their business they can work together and profit they can share in uh, cooperative societies uh, government also helps a lot so see what is cooperative society it is an organization of people who come together to form a group to meet their common economic social and cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned enterprise means partnership is there nearly 15 20 30 people they come together they shake hands they join together they pool their income they start enterprise in that government also helps them and after that to run that enterprise they work together and after that they share the profit so it works on the principle of mutual help and welfare a cooperative society is democratically managed if any decision is to be taken in cooperative society then all the people they sit together they think and when all agree then any step is being taken so author asks from them why not organize yourself into a cooperative you are alone alone you cannot fight with this these bengal making industries but if you change yourself in cooperative then you can start any other business you can get rid of this vicious circle so when she asked this thing from young men the young men i have already fallen in the vicious circle of middle men who trap their fathers and forefathers so there are middle men who give money to these fellows so their forefathers and fathers have taken loan from them and now they have to pay that loan by working in this bengal industry so they have fallen in vicious cycle of middle men so when she asked these young men they say that even if we get organized we are one who will be hauled up by the police beaten and dragged to jail for doing something illegal they say if once we are going to organize first thing we cannot get organized second thing if we try to get organized so police will come and it will drag us to police station there it will she will beat us and we will be thrown inside the jail as if we have done something illegal means making a cooperative that is their right but if they are doing that legal thing still they will be treated as if they have do, done any illegal thing they say there is no leader among us they say that uh, all these uh, these young men they are illiterate and nobody is there who can show them path how they should do things differently so nobody is there who can guide them and their fathers are as tired as they are their fathers are experienced one might they guide but they are also busy in working with their children so whole day they get tired by working in bengal industry and after that they become tired and their mind also stops working so they can also not lead them they cannot show them path there is nobody who can tell them what to do what not to do so say so they cannot organize themselves into cooperative when she talks with them they endlessly remain talking in spiral in continuity which has no end and they talk about their poverty after that due to poverty apathy comes in them apathy means indifferent they become indifferent from the problems whatever is going on let the that that go because they are not having any sources any opportunity any way to remove that so they become indifferent and due to poverty they they feel greed and due to that sometimes injustice is also done so see listening to them i see two distinct words when she talked with mukesh mukesh grandmother mukesh father and after that she is talking with these young men so at this time she found two things two distinct words they are very different words one of the family caught in a web of poverty one thing is there that family doesn't have any money due to that they cannot start any other business any uh, they cannot leave this bengal industry second thing they are burdened by caste of uh, stigma of caste so they have been caught in the stigma of caste Ka- stigma means discrimination due to caste so they have been 
fallen into discrimination due to caste, so they cannot leave this industry. Second thing, that they have been entrapped in the vicious circle of sahukar, middlemen, policemen, the keepers of law, bureaucrats and politicians. So all these together force them to stay in bangal making industry. Together they have imposed the baggage on the child that he cannot put down. So these all fellows, sahukar, middlemen, policemen, keepers of law, bureaucrats and politicians together, together they impose the baggage. This much load of work they put on this child. When child is very much young, then they have, there is no uh, thinking uh, ability develops. At that time, when he is 3 or 4 or 5 years old, at that time, this baggage is imposed on him, so he cannot put it down and he accepts it as natural. When he becomes young, so he finds that it is the natural for him. He, ca he cannot oppose, he never revolts and he throughout his, his life, till his old age, till his death, he cannot get rid of this baggage. Like his father, his father also started in his childhood this work and till his death he will not be free out of this burden. So they together impose the baggage in the childhood so that there may not be any kind of revolt. The to do anything else would mean to dare. So one more thing is there, it is daring is also very important quality if anybody wants to change anything to change the business at that time he will have to dare he will have to oppose he will have to deny to do work in this bengal industry and for that daring is required and daring is not part of his growing up from childhood he is doing this type of work so he did not learn daring he could not oppose any time. So there is no daring is his part. So he cannot dare, he cannot oppose. So naturally he accepts all these burden and he never thinks in the in his life to change the job, to change this um, uh, work. And uh, so he is not that much daring. But when Arthur has talked with Mukesh, so she finds that there is some some part of daring is there. He has daring in his heart. So she is very happy. When Mukesh says that I want to be motor mechanic, so she becomes very happy. But she asks that garage is long way from your home. How will you reach to garage? So he says, I will walk. He insists. So the author asks, do you also dream of flying a plane? So he suddenly, he is suddenly silent because he never dreamed. He cannot dream. He knows that is that it is to be a pilot is out of his reach. For being pilot, person has to study. A lot of money he would be having. So he, does, he is illiterate. He doesn't have any money. So he only can be motor mechanic. There he is confident and he, is, uh, he confidently talks with the author and sees straight into her eyes but here he stares at the ground and his voice is also not much strong in murmuring sound he says and he feels embarrassment but he feels shame but this shame has not turned into regret still hope is there he can change his business he can change his occupation he he is he has strong belief in his in himself so he is content to dream of car and that he sees hurtling down the streets of his town. He knows that he can be the car mechanic, he can be car driver because so many cars they move down in the streets of Firozabad but few aeroplanes fly over Firozabad so he cannot even dream about that, about being pilot. So I have completed this chapter. If any problem you can ask me. Thank you.